الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي صدق الله العظيم These are the last four ayahs of Surah Al-Fajr Very beautiful ayahs Very moving ayahs It tells you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a great reward for an individual that works hard to achieve the highest possible goal. And once that individual achieves that goal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him an nafsul mutma'inna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is communicating with that nafs, with that individual that has worked so hard on himself or herself to bring them up to a level where they are content. They're satisfied. They're obedient to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're happy in what they have. And they're not sad on what they don't have. As everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything returns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is their philosophy. Whatever I have is given to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Was I deserving of that? Probably not. So that's His mercy that I have what I have. That's why they're happy, they're content, they're never sad, they're never complaining. Because again, remember, who are we? We are Abd. What is Abd? Abd is a slave. Slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And slave has a very different thought process. He's happy and content in whatever the master gives him. And this is a very old philosophy. That one of the tabi'i brought a slave. And he was a very different person prior to buying the slave. And he said, my whole thought process was changed by this one slave. And the people asked him, how? He said, I asked him two questions. I asked him, what is your name? And the slave said, slaves don't have names. Master can call them however he pleases. It's like, wow. And look at me. I'm so egoistic. And I'm also the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, okay, what do you like? What are your likes and what are your dislikes? So that I may remember them so that I can fulfill those for you. And his answer was, slaves don't have likes and dislikes. Whatever master gives him, he's happy. He's content. So we being the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have been given so much. But we do not want to be thankful. We do not want to be appreciative. Because that is the status of our heart. Now each one of us need to ask this question to ourselves: When was the last time you were happy from heart? When was the last time you were happy from here? Not from here, not from here, not from here, from here. Because that is the happiness that comes by itself, unintentionally, uncontrolled, driven through emotions, and you're excited about it. And you're like, I wish this kind of happiness hits me every time. Now there were times when little things would make us happy. Now big things don't make us happy. This is the status of our nafs and nafsul ammara. As it's mentioned in Surah Yusuf, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي That I do not say that I am above the nafs. Nafs is with every individual. And it is the duty of nafs to take you away from the right path. But as a human being, it is my duty to take that nafs from the status of ammara 
through the process of lawama, take it to the status of mutma'inna, which is in the end. Because mutma'inna, the contentment, has its own challenges. Now think about it. Let me, let me give you a very simple example. So you start going to school, you work hard, you become an A student. That's easy. What is difficult is remaining an A student. Every challenge that comes through, you got to now excel. A minus is not an answer because you're an A student. In some schools and colleges, A minus start with 93%. So now they have higher standards. So the believer has a higher standard of obedience. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls upon these people who have higher standards. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna. Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah. Return to your Lord. Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah. How well pleased and pleasing to him. So you're in the status of contentment. You're happy. That is why the companions would call what? Radiyallahu anhu wa radu'an. They were happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was happy with them. That is the status that every individual must seek for. That should be the goal. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَادْخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي So enter among my righteous servants. Isn't this what we ask in every salah? اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us on the right path. Sirata Ladina and Anta Alehim, the path of those that you have bestowed your blessings upon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning about those same individuals and saying, if you want to be successful, fathuli fi ibadi, enter among those who are my worshippers, my slaves, my servants, who have attained the status of Ya Ayyatuha Nafsul Mutma'inna. Be in their companionship. Be in their companionship. It's quite open. It's quite evident. If you hang out with people who are bad influence, you will certainly get bad influence. But if you hang out with good people, you'll certainly have a good influence. And who will decide good and bad? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides. He already decided. And he told his prophet to tell the people of the ummah what is good and what is bad. Now we do not need to reinvent the wheel. Being ethical, being lawful is good. Breaking the law is not good. Lying is not good. Doesn't matter how much benefit you can get out of this world. Deceiving people is not good. Cheating is not good. Unfairness and injustice is not good. Whatever is the opposite is good. Righteousness is good. Obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is good. Walking in the footsteps of the Prophet, good. And for this ummah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So this, this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has defined everything. Everything is open. Bayin, open, mubin, open. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَدْخُلِ fi ibadi." When you enter among those that are my slaves, you are going to get a good company and you are going to get a chance to improve and get to a higher level of attainment. So what will going to happen as a result? What khuli jannati? I will also going to give you a reward of entering you in my jannah. And certainly in jannah, there is not one level. There are uncounted levels. Even in jannah al-firdaus, there is not one level. There are multiple levels. And even in the Jannah al Firdaus, everybody is not at the same level, so they get different levels of blessings. And it's all about the thought process. Even in the Jannah, there will going to be people who will be sad. Initially, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who knows everything, of course, but He will ask His angel, ask these people, why are they sad? And the angels were going to ask these people, why are you sad? Aren't you happy with everything that is in front of you that was given to you by a Lord as promised? And the response will be, we were not righteous to get this. We never did good deeds for Jannah. 
We did good deeds for our Lord. We want to see Him. That is our happiness. Seeing Him is our happiness. This is not our happiness. They have a higher stature. They have a higher thought process. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order all the curtains to be removed so that they can see the Lord in Jannah. This is all about how you think, how you want to move forward. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is setting a standards for us. But before we start walking on that standards, the two very beautiful and powerful words in Arabic language, they don't come from Quran or Hadith, but they're very powerful. They were going to change the way we think. And those words are, Kun anta. Be yourself. Be yourself. Easy to say, difficult to live. A lot of us are living a life of somebody else. Because we have set them as our standards. Somebody wants to follow some rock star. Somebody wants to look like a celebrity. Somebody wants to follow some tycoon, a big guy at Wall Street. The other icon, I want to look like them. When you want to look like the other person, you are a robot. Because you got your standards set wrong. So, kun anta be yourself. And yourself has a core. And that core starts with la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's your core. That there is no Lord to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is the Prophet and the last messenger. And we are his ummah. And we need to follow in that footsteps. So be yourself. Come out of this thing. Stop living life of somebody else. Stop living a life. A lot of us are living a life where we are living a life to please others. That's why the hearts are so hardened up. They don't get happy because our happiness lies in the fact what does he or she has? I want to have it. Because he has it or she has it. So when I get it, I said, okay, now I have this. Let's see what else somebody else has it. Now I want to have that. What kind of life is this? You will never be happy this way. We will never be happy this way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that you got to be happy in what you have, but that doesn't mean you kill and crush your dreams. It's good to have dreams. It's good to have goals. It's good to have vision, ambitions, and work hard to fulfill them. But you, we need to define our goals right. Wearing an Armani suit is not a goal of life. Driving a Bugatti is not the goal of life. These things may come along. But the problem is we have set them as our goals. That I want to get a job that gives me six figures. And I want to buy a house that is at least half a million dollars. And I want to work at so and so place as a vice president. But that's it. Or president, or a CEO, I want to run my own business, make million dollars a year, whatever. But that's, that's it, what's more? That's not kun anta. That's somebody else you're looking at and you're like, oh, that's what I want to be. The life is not a GTV. That's the problem. We look at all of this glamour, I want to, to live that glamour. And when you walk into that glamour, glamour, you realize it's full of stress. You know these celebrities? Their smiles are calculated. Wow, you don't want to live that life where each and every act is calculated, counted. Somebody tells you, the manager tells you, you got to give the autograph or you don't need to give the autograph. There's no free will. There's no free will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a much better and happier content of life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Sibghat Allah, the color of Allah, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given to you. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ سِبْغَةً What color is better than the color Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you? It's not the color of skin. It's not the color of clothes. It is the way of life. It is the color of soul. 
It is the beautification, the nur of the soul. Sibghat Allah. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ السِّبْغَةِ And then the believer would say what? وَنَحْنُ لَهُ عَابِدُونَ Yes, O oh Lord, we are here to worship you and you alone. That thought process needs to come from here. عَابِدُونَ Abd is a core. Slave. I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And him alone, I am his slave. If it doesn't come from here, it will going to cause nothing but stress. Iman is here. Not here. Here. So we need to look at the status of our heart. Why is my heart so hardened up? Why am I not happy? Why am I so sad all the time? Why am I so stressed out all the time? Why am I so angry all the time? Why do I not want to listen to other individuals? Why do I not want to improve? Why can't I take criticism? All of these forces influence us. And we react to them the way our inside is. You can only fool people around you for some time. But then there are moments when that insight comes out. So the idea is to fix that insight. And kun anta, be yourself. Because everybody else is already taken. They're already taken. They are themselves. There is already somebody called Justin Bieber. You can't be another one. So don't be another Justin Bieber. Don't be another actor from Hollywood. That guy is already taken. What is your identity? Who are you? We need to build our own individual identity and at the core of that identity should be La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no sacrifice there. There is no bending over there. And then we build our personality from there as we shine as individuals. If I walk up over here and I start talking to you like somebody else who talks that way, then I'm mimicking that person. That's not me. My emotions are not there. I'm just acting. And this life is not about acting. If this life was about acting, it would be the most horrible thing to do. And it would be the most horrible thing to be punished on acting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to change, not act that we have changed. When you act that you have changed, that's hypocrisy. That is the definition of hypocrisy, that the person is acting like the person is not. Pretending to be somebody else. So kun anta, be yourself, understand yourself, live with yourself, spend some time with yourself, get to know where I am lacking, where I need to improve. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَعْيُونٍ And... These muttaqin, the righteous people, will be in the gardens and the springs. And after that, starts defining their qualities. In one of the ayahs says, Akhirina ma'atahum rabbuhum. They are the people who take what their Lord gives them. They don't complain. Why me? Why was I not given this? No, no. Akhirina ma'atahum rabbuhum. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ مُحْسِنِينَ Indeed, they were before that doers of good. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the reward in the Jannah, they take it. And they take it because even in the life before, they were the doers of the good. And in the ayahs to come, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in ayah number 20 and 21, وَفِي الْأَرْضِ آيَاتٌ لِلْمُوقِنِينَ And on this planet earth, are the signs for those people who have faith. They learn from it. And then the next ayah says, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ And in, in, in you, in you there are signs. A lot of the people start looking at themselves as a biological body. They look at the heart, the brain, the throat, the skeletons, the muscular system. And to them this is a sign. That's, that's part of the signs. Even the more complex thing is our soul. Which when the people ask the Prophet, what is the soul? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told his Prophet, they can't comprehend what it is. All you need to tell them, 
قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ It is just the Amr of your Lord. That's all you can understand and comprehend. You cannot understand the complexities of life. Think about it. If you go out in the desert, how many grains of dust do you find? Each dust was created and the number of them are calculated. Each raindrop that falls from the sky is calculated. And the Quran says that when we bring down the rain, we know how much to send. It just doesn't come like blank. Who among us can count all the raindrops that may fall in maybe one acre of a land and not miss one? And the Lord calculates all the raindrops that may fall anywhere, any number of times, with any frequency and abundance. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how can the servant live here and not be his worshiper? And rather live a life which is dual life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in you there are signs. Learn it and live your life the way it should be lived. Now think about it. If you ever paint your house, you look at each room, you look at the theme of the room, you go out, you buy some paint colors, you test. If it doesn't go, you buy another one. So much thought process in painting one room in the house. And then you buy all these different things to make sure things don't drip on the floor. You need to have proper ladders, brushes, sticks. Rollers, different sizes. All of this preparation goes in painting one room. And then you're excited about it. Extremely. Because it's fresh. It's new. How about this guy in here? He's still 40 years old, 50 years old, 10 years old. Never refreshed. So there has to be something that needs to be done about it. When we bring the change from within you will notice the difference. When you're happy from inside, you will automatically be happy from outside. If you're happy from outside, but you are not happy from inside, then you will going to cause yourself a greater stress. Over the period of time, you're going to ruin your health. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a guideline. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'innah O nafs, get to the status of contentment happiness and then see I will enter you in the Jannah if you are my obedient servant أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم